one to download, rate, and subscribe to the 415ers podcast. Coming at you three times a week on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network. Obviously, this has been a fun season to begin the podcast, Mark. And I appreciate you joining me on this journey as... Look, I mean, we, we've had certainly some difficult episodes, but tonight is one that is is not like it. It it's got to be fun. It's got to be a party because the 49ers are back in the playoffs, a place that I'm sure they expected to be. I mean, I know I expected them to be there. I'm sure you did, too. But after the first seven weeks, it was kind of looking like, well, you know, they, they're not too far out of the NFC West. Seattle is playing pretty well, but you never really know the way that this thing is, is all rolling. And, you know, to go from Trey Lance, then week two to Jimmy Garoppolo, and then you move on to Brock Purdy two weeks ago, it's it's kind of hard to put into perspective just how wild of a season this has been. Um, as far as Brock Purdy's performance tonight, though, I mean, we we, t- we kind of touched on, at least I, I thought his, his confidence was just, um, it was palpable. Like, I, I know he wasn't that great. And in fact, the, the oh no throw that, you're, that you were talking about earlier that, you know, may or may not have been um, intercepted, if not due to a, to a flag. You know, I, I th- there were some throws before that I thought were off. Uh, you know, and to begin the second quarter, there was a couple of, of throws. There's one like in the flat. It was really when Seattle started to kind of dial up the blitz, yeah. but he completely missed Christian McCaffrey in the flat on one, followed it up by throwing a ball short to Brandon Ayuk. I thought that we saw Brandon Brock Purdy's uh, arm strength or, or lack thereof show up a little bit tonight against Seattle. So that'll be something to note. But I, I I can't say the moment was too big for a rookie, seventh rounder or not. Like I, I can't say that the lights were too bright at Lumen Field and that Seattle was a team that that got in his head. Like he he maybe didn't play as well as he did each of his first two weeks as as the quarterback. But I mean, Mark, he like he he gave me enough confidence in him that like even if he made that interception and even if Seattle had gone down and scored. I believe Brock Purdy would have came out the next drive as the exact same dude as he was before he threw the pick. Like that that's kind of where I see him as be, being maybe a little bit different than both Trey and Jimmy. Jimmy's gritty. Trey, unfortunately, we haven't got to see as much. But for me, Brock Purdy has already kind of put himself in a different category when it comes to composure. I guess it's required of someone to be successful in this league. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And I think, you know, to that point, there were two huge third down conversions for the 49ers in the second half. The first was a a third and 15, about five minutes left in the third quarter. Niners up 21 to six. This one was less about Purdy and and more about Ray Ray McLeod and maybe even more about the Seattle defense. Third and 15, Seattle brings pressure. Brock Purdy, just a simple little drop-off to Ray-Ray McLeod over the middle. McLeod runs to the left boundary and barely gets the first down to convert a third and long. They ultimately don't end up scoring on that drive. But just to, you know, give your punting unit some more room, you you pin Seattle back eventually. That was a huge conversion. Again, not as much on Brock Purdy, but just being able to get the ball away, impressive enough against a blitz. Maybe the single most impressive throw, in my opinion, Evan, and there were some good ones to choose from. Third and seven from your own four-yard line. You're up 21-6, to six, about 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter. This was, I think, the play of the game uh, for Brock Purdy because if you don't convert, you're punting from your own end zone, you're up two scores, Seattle's going to get the ball probably around midfield, even if it's just a uh, not much of a punt return. They go down and score. Suddenly there's still 10 minutes left and you're only up by seven points. The The Lumen Field crowd is, is suddenly feeling themselves and who knows where the game moves from there. But no, Brock Purdy stepped up, third and seven conversion to guess who? Third and Juwan, who regardless of who's throwing the football, he is the third down target. He had a couple of third down conversions in this one. Uh, that was a huge play in another moment, Evan, where we saw Brock Purdy look poised beyond his years third and seven conversion from your own four yard line with Seattle fans basically breathing down your neck from behind and that that small part of the field back there and you get a conversion you give your again your punting team some room you waste some more clock and ultimately you win the game large part because of that conversion huge 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 conversion for Purdy and and Jennings at that moment yeah and Jawan Jennings look that's the type of route where 
as a receiver, like they talk about it all the time. Like you know you're going to go after the, you're going you're going to go have to go over the middle, and you're going to have to take a lick. And Brock Purdy is basically that was a good throw, but he's putting a hospital ball in Juwan Jennings' hands. Like he knows <laughs> that he is going to get blown up by either that inside linebacker or safety that's coming down because they know exactly what the first down marker is. They know that Juwan Jennings is a guy that. You know, yeah, sure. Maybe he's not. He doesn't have the route running ability of, of Ayuk. He doesn't have the physicality of Debo, but he is a go-to target for this team. Like they are trying to dislodge the football, knowing that he's probably going to catch it. So that's a huge play. Uh, Kyle Shanahan talking to the media right now, talking about Brock Purdy. "Quote: He's definitely the most poised rookie I have ever had. Hmm. He was poised all week, even being unsure if he'd be able to go." Didn't have any options or choices. Purdy got comfortable and better as the game went. It was pretty unbelievable. I think that's what a lot of fans were thinking watching the game, Mark. Have we ever heard Kyle Shanahan say things like that about his quarterback? Ever? I mean, he's, he's I don't been think so. complimentary, but it, it, it's never seemed like it's been at that level. I don't know. It's It's wild. No, he definitely doesn't bow down to... I mean, honestly, he doesn't really talk about a lot of players like that. I mean, outside of the quarterback, uh, I know that maybe players don't get as much praise. But no, he does not talk. I I don't remember him uh, in Atlanta talking about Matt Ryan and the few press opportunities that he got as as the OC, talking about his MVP like that. I know Matt Ryan was a veteran quarterback. Um, But it's an interesting, interesting note. And look, it, it just goes to show how unbelievable and how randomly pleasantly surprising Brock Purdy has been this year. I mean, and, and, and I don't know too, like, I also think the the entire um, poise conversation to me is something that does apply to each and every member of the 49ers. Like you, you just see it even on defense and, and that, you know, it's from D'Amico Ryans who also, uh, as, as you've said multiple times throughout this podcast is he's not going to be with the 49ers next year. No, he, he's going to get a head coaching job if he wants it. True. which I would assume, I'll assume that he does. Um, but everyone on this team has has this sort of next play mentality. I mean, even a guy like, you know, Talano Hufanga, who has been burnt a couple of times in recent weeks on big play scores, um, he came up for some big hits. He, he forced a fumble earlier in the game uh, with a big hit on Geno Smith. I mean, Samson Ebukam, who I know went down late with, with what looked like an injury, it was getting to the quarterback. Like, there's just so many different dudes that step up, including Mark. The midseason acquisition that has honestly been the catalyst for the entire offense. And while I, yes, I did admit. Victory picked, lap it. I, well, I picked Seattle to win this game, so I can't completely oh. take a victory lap. <laughs> but I did legitimately believe that Christian McCaffrey was going to get a workhorse-type load, 25 carries minimum. On the ground, he ends up with 26 touches on the ground, six catches, 138 yards and a touchdown. Um, but even watching it, Mark, like I was I was kind of wowed. I, I didn't know he had that in him. I just simply thought that due to the situation with Debo being out, rookie quarterback, first game on the road, Seattle division game, a lot on the line, that Kyle Shanahan was going to trust his veteran. But even, I mean, even that was impressive. Yeah, 32 total touches, 138 yards, 108 of them were on the ground on 26 carries and, of course, had that touchdown late in the first half. Uh, He was incredible, and even when he wasn't getting the ball, Evan, he's still having a gigantic impact on the play. The Niners' other two touchdowns, they scored three touchdowns in this game, one by McCaffrey, the other two went to George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey was directly involved in both. Uh, First score of the game. It was we I'm I'm surprised we haven't talked about this play yet. Maybe one of the maybe the best play design of Kyle Shanahan's career to this point. Uh Ray Ray McLeod in motion. The Niners are in a shotgun from right to left. McLeod runs behind Brock Purdy with McCaffrey on his right hip. Purdy takes the snap, a little fake to the left to McLeod in motion, then quickly turns to the right, a fake to McCaffrey out in the flat. You have first Everyone on the defense jumping to McLeod, then jumping to McCaffrey. All the while, George Kittle is sprinting down the middle of the field, wide open after the second pump fake. 
Uh, Purdy hits the easy throw to Kittle, who runs all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. Niners on the board. They take a lead early. Then early in the third quarter, uh, not not a same, not the same play by any stretch of the imagination. Kittle's lined up on the left side of the offensive line, and all that happens is the Niners run Christian McCaffrey out to the left flat. The Seattle defense so worried about Christian McCaffrey, who had been gashing them all game long. They jump. You, you can see like three defenders run with McCaffrey, one of whom, maybe two of whom, are supposed to be guarding George Kittle, who just runs past them on the left seam. Purdy hits him. He makes a couple guys miss, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. So to your point, workman like they for McCaffrey, 32 total touches, 138 total yards, and a touchdown. But he was directly involved in all three Niners scores. He is an elite weapon, one of the best, if not the best weapon in the NFL. And uh, he certainly showed why in this one. And and Shanahan was not shy using him, and as he needed to. Because without Debo Samuel, he needed to give someone the ball 26 times on the ground, and it was McCaffrey. Yeah, he wasn't shy using him as a decoy either. Look, and this is this is where I think Kyle Shanahan's brilliance sort of comes into play. I mean, sure, he, look, he, he dialed up some creative plays. You, you laid out, obviously, the 28-yard touchdown from Purdy to Kittle to start things. Um, they come right out of the gates in the second half with another bomb to Kittle. But it's how he sets up everything. I mean, it's like... It's like a pitcher that continues to pepper the outside corner soft, 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 and then hammers 95 miles per hour on your knuckles. Like, Mark, that that first touchdown to Kittle was so wide open. Oh, my God. <laughs> and and Christian McCaffrey drew so much attention because he's, he got the ball nine of the first 12 plays of the game. <laughs> like, Kyle Shanahan told Seattle – hey, we're going to run 23 down your throat until you at least give us an opening to try and do something else, which then turned into George Kittle cakewalking 30 yards down the field in for a score. Like, it's 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 what Christian McCaffrey obviously does as far as his production. 140 yards and a touchdown is nothing to scoff at, but it's what else he opens up the gravity of everything that he brings to the table, that to me is why he would be considered the best playmaker in football, maybe the best running back. I know he kind of does everything else as well, including block, which we saw a couple of times tonight. But that's also why we saw Kyle Shanahan, I think, not go to Jordan Mason until 746 in the third quarter is because Christian McCaffrey has been in these situations before. He's been in the trenches. He is a veteran with so much experience and so much understanding of where he needs to be, how he's going to be used, and then still running each play that he's not involved in 100% like he's getting the ball. So, you know, I, I know it's kind of funny. Jordan Mason comes in, gets the ball, comes out. Christian McCaffrey taps him back in immediately. <laughs> but that's what also what kind of shape he is in. And I know he's gotten the label as being a little bit injury prone. But after a game like that tonight in which he's walking out, I'm sure feeling sore, but knowing he's got 10 days to recover, that's another position where I'm just like, God, that 23 is an absolute beast. No, no doubt. Niners don't win this game, not even close without Christian McCaffrey. He was the best player on the football field. On the Niners' offensive side, Seattle's defensive side all came long. He was incredible. Um, I'm I'm glad you brought up Jordan Mason because as we're watching here with with a bunch of the guys at, at 95-7 the game, everyone's wondering where is Jordan Mason? You know, you got to spell McCaffrey a little bit. You mentioned that one carry kind of midway through the third quarter. You didn't see him again until the last drive when Kyle Shanahan decided it was time to ice the game. Needed a few hard yards up the middle from Jordan Mason. You know, just give me three yards, four yards a pop. We'll get a first down and the game will be over. He ultimately broke one, what, 55 yards all the way down to in, inside the 10, inside the five yard line. Almost, almost went and I know maybe he should have went down after he got the first down and, and not risk fumbling the ball or anything, but can't blame a rookie for trying to get into the end zone. But to your point, I think the Christian McCaffrey injury prone designation that kind of everyone just, you know, offhand gives him, you can understand it because he's had a, a couple of bad luck years due to injuries. But he's also had games like this where he touches the ball 30 plus times, a lot of them. And he doesn't really shy away from them. You kind of get the sense that McCaffrey's, you know, a finesse player. He's going to catch 10 passes out in the flat, and that's going to be the majority of his touches. He's not running between the tackles. This was a gritty Christian McCaffrey in Seattle. The Niners needed it. 
He delivered. He was fantastic. And uh, you're seeing why the Niners so desperately coveted him because – I'll tell, I mean, I can promise you this. They're not on this seven-game win streak. They do not have the NFC West wrapped up if they did not make the trade for Christian McCaffrey. He has been the key to this whole thing. 